So what were you doing the past couple of months? I mean, what's going on right now? Well, I'm shooting the Jim Gaffigan show. That's what I'm currently doing. Oh, that's doing. right. But what, you, you weren't doing that in L.A., right? The Gaffigan show. No, was... I, was, I was shooting another period in L.A. That's a show on Comedy Central. Oh, my God. Look at you. You're constantly doing all these different shows. That's right. And writing books. <laughs> and are you writing movies? Uh, no, I'm not writing a movie at the moment. I'm no TV shows? Nothing else, but whatever. I'm right. Yeah, I write TV shows. Whatever. Who cares? What do you who mean? Really who really cares? cares? No, no. This is a this is a, trying this to make it seem like this is a big gap. about the world and about politics and about thoughts. It's not about my. I've noticed. A, a career. I have noticed as of late on Twitter because that's basically how I follow what everybody's doing now. That you right. have gotten, I think, more explicitly political than in the past. Is that is that an accurate assessment? Like particularly that on Twitter. That is an accurate assessment. Yes, that is an accurate assessment of my twitter feed because you well but i mean is that is that the case of you as a person because you've been really i've been knowing like you're getting you're really getting you know and maybe there's just a function of things aren't you know maybe there's problems at home you want to avoid your kids i understand that dynamic um but you've been really getting going like deep into it with a bunch of like right-wing trolls at times i do at times i get very deep i'll go i will follow them into their troll holes and excavate with them I will shine the light in their little troll holes. Uh, not so much because I'm looking to change their minds, because that's not possible. But what I am trying to do is illuminate for other people who may be uh, not as engaged as to sort of what the tenor, tone, and substance of the troll conversation is, in the hopes that if somebody is thinking, oh, maybe this Trump guy isn't so bad or this Cruz guy isn't so bad, that by looking at their followers and seeing what their followers are saying about them, that maybe they will reevaluate that decision is that what's energizing the, the trump i mean or uh, because I, I also feel like there's uh, you've been very active too in sort of um uh, gun issue well i started uh yes after newtown happened i started getting very sort of uh vocal about gun issues um i live right next door to newtown and so uh that obviously hit home uh, uh, in, a, in a very in a literal sense. And so, yeah, I started getting very invested in uh, learning about the topic, under trying to form, formulate a coherent opinion about the topic, and engaging with people online about the topic. And um, I, I feel like I'm actually a fairly moderate voice in terms of uh, gun control. Um, but the way, I, but, but 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 a moderate voice on gun control to anybody who is a pro-gun person is is a is a is a siren call to engage and attack because right. it, it it is an absolutist issue for some people. I mean, totally. And I mean, I, I I'm curious because I just I feel like you know, and I've talked to other people about this, but I and maybe it's just I I, I don't know. Maybe I pay more attention to it, or maybe it's just a function of of Twitter, although even I think I feel like I've noticed this dynamic even in the age of, uh, within the context of the age of Twitter, is that um, comedians are a lot more willing, and maybe it's just our generation, because, you know, uh, all the comedians I know are now not in their, you know, late 20s, um, right. and so they're in a different point in their career, and they have more confidence, or I don't know what, but it feels like Comedians are getting more political to me. Is, is that, I mean, or are willing to be more political. Is that, do you have that sense? Yeah, I have the sense that, and you might be right, it might be generational, it's just as people sort of get into an older age and are concerned with a world that exists beyond um, drinking and, and having sex, that, that they may be willing to... Expose that. I know that my comedy hasn't gotten particularly my age. All I do is, bas is the drinking mostly is what it basically comes down to. Yeah, that's fine. Or the, uh, and for me, it's the pill popping. But my my comedy hasn't gotten political on stage so much, only because I'm not a good political comedian. But I'm I'm very happy to uh, express myself politically on Twitter or wherever. Um, in Twitter in particular, because I feel like, I mean, I've taken the position that, that 
Twitter is a free service that I'm providing to you, and you can either follow it or not. It's not um, – nobody's required to read it, and I'm only going to talk about things that I'm interested in and make jokes about things that I'm interested in and not feel like I need to pander to anybody or serve any kind of greater marketing cause. Um, then it's just whatever people, however people value my opinion. So if for months now I've been – tweeting almost nonstop about politics, and it's because it's what I'm paying the most attention to right now. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what this show is. It's a free service. <laughs> we basically don't like, we talk about what we want to talk about, no, but, even don't want to. I mean, honestly, that's basically what it is. Yeah, but, but I think, but, but the main difference is that people actually follow my Twitter account. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's shit on Mark Marin for a while, shall we? <laughs> Always happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this show has totally lost its edge, hasn't he? This show has totally lost its edge. Um, but yeah, no, and it's um, well, there's you know, there's a few, but but you just did it basically because of Levar Burton, right? I mean, you'd be, let's be honest. I mean, your Twitter, your you'd have like fifteen, twenty tw- Twitter followers. If it wasn't for Levar Burton. I don't know if people remember think- that. That's exactly right. When I first joined Twitter, I had, as everybody does, zero followers. Uh, and I noticed that LeVar Burton at the time had like 30,000 followers. And so I picked a fight with him uh, called LaWar, which I, I dubbed LaWar, which is just LeVar with a W, uh, where I just badgered and hector, hectored him and we got into it back and forth. All in good fun, though, Sam. All in good fun. And it was mutually beneficial to both of us in terms of gaining Twitter followers. I gamed the system. And didn't he also, wasn't he sort of just like mystified? I also remember that you did something like this with Facebook with, uh, was it Ira Glass? Or was it somebody, wasn't it somebody like some NPR guy? Because somebody was telling me that they were at a... And maybe, I, I, I can't remember who told me, maybe it was Show Walter, or somebody told me this story that they were at a uh, talk that Ira Glass was giving. Maybe it wasn't Ira Glass, but somebody... David Sedaris. David Sedaris. And somebody raised their hand and was like, why are, why are you having this huge battle with Mike Lee and Black? And he was just like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I think, his, I think this, uh, the way the story was related to me was uh, his response was who's Michael Ian Black, <laughs> which, which was the correct response. But what uh, were you doing at the time that all these people thought that you were having this war with David Sedaris and he didn't even know who you were? I was, tr- I was trying to start a literary feud with him, uh, in, <laughs> in 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 the hopes in the hopes of selling more copies of my first book, um, but he didn't play along. Because he's not online and had never heard of me, so it was it was more of a one sided literary feud than anything else. That's so. Wait, so what did you do? Did you like, did you like uh, like imply that he was responding to you in some way? I mean, did you just put out like you know David Sedaris is wrong in his assessment of my book, or what was it that you did? Um, oh God, it was a long time ago. I honestly don't remember, but I know it was uh, hilariously funny. That's all I know. <laughs> That is, I mean, it is really funny. It was really smart. You were on top of that. Somebody just tweeted from your account, love hearing the marm of smarm on today's majority report. Are you the Come marm on. of smarm? Is that your, is that Come your, on. is that your moniker? Scott Aukerman dubbed me the marm of smarm. Did he? And yeah. what was that based on? I mean, I mean, you're, I mean, there's, you have a. I, I think it was, I think it was based on my general personality. Right. I mean, you put, but you put on smarmy airs, don't you? Oh yeah, sometimes. But but list, but did, but when we started this interview, didn't I start with a very sincere and loving tribute to you by saying hosting a show like yours is the one thing I haven't done in entertainment? And 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 it was almost with a wistful tone, like oh, if only I could do what Sam does. Yeah, That's I mean, it was army. almost just a little bit too wistful. I mean, I think it did. I think the people think that it did uh, it come across as smarmy, but um, people are. <laughs> I, I mean, do people want to know? I mean, do do you listen? Are you a regular listen to the listener to the program? Oh God, no, 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 no. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to find it. Do I listen to it? Come on. It's it's you actually it's. Um, 
it's very exclusive the way we distribute it. You actually have to win a contest. Uh, we do a contest every do, six months. Do you mail really? out cassettes of it? Is that how it works? You just you prepackaged envelopes. You put cassettes in it and send them out. Well, to listeners? first you have to buy a raffle ticket. <laughs> if you win that raffle ticket, then we will start sending you the cassettes because it's too expensive. Uh, so right. we right. only so can have sense. at any given time like 15 people listen to the show. It's a very <laughs> exclusive group of people. And they're always like six or seven days behind because we just can't afford to send it out FedEx. That's basically <laughs> what we, we, we try and increase our, um, you know, our membership rates just to send it all out in FedEx. But I mean, do do you listen? Yeah, you must, because you, you drive in all the time. You like you're from Connecticut, right? So you do you drive in? Do you what do you listen to when you get into your car? I listen to a tremendous amount of conservative talk radio. Oh, do you That's really? Primarily what I listen. Oh yeah, a lot of that, a lot of NPR. But I would say the balance is probably seventy percent conservative talk radio. And then the NPR stuff is just all corporatist. The NPR stuff is uh, maybe. Uh, twenty percent, ten percent. Uh, let's say five percent uh, progressive uh, talk radio, and then five percent music. Okay. So now, uh, what uh, what conservative talkers do you do you favor? So let's just say Savage is on uh, W uh, uh, ABC, and uh, you know, I guess uh, Levin or no, uh, would Levin is on W ABC still, right? So uh, who do you listen well, to? Like, I, do you- I'm listening primarily to satellite radio, so I can go down their lineup for you. Um, I don't listen to a lot of Savage. I don't listen to a lot of Rush anymore, m- mostly just because uh, he's not on satellite radio. Interesting. Um, so I, I will, but I, 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 but believe me, I've listened to more than my share of Rush. Wait, so who are you listening um, to? You're not listening to David Wilk- uh, Wilkow, are you? Andrew Wilkow. You know I'm listening to Wilkow. Oh, geez. <laughs> You'll appreciate this. So he started out in Albany. Okay, his right. father-in-law is the program director for whatever station he's on now, Patriot or whatever it is. And so oh, Will Kyle uh-huh. was on. I don't know what because he's obviously he's on Sirius, uh, so I don't listen to him anymore. But Will Kyle was on uh, Albany Talk Radio when I lived upstate, and so I would call into his program and uh, just to mess with him. This is when he was the. This is the way he would dub himself. He was the undisputed king of the second wave of conservative talkers. <laughs> He's still doing that. Oh, no. Is he really? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, God, yes. And so, which is amazing. And I, but, I don't... But, it, but is true. Has anybody disputed him? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I would call him. And, you know, the fact is, because I'm in talk radio, I know exactly how to game a, uh, how to get right onto the, the top of the call list. And I right. also knew his clock. I knew when his hard breaks were. And so right. I would specifically sit there. With my uh, iPhone, I remember having the, 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 the time right in front of me, and I would just filibuster him in the last 90 seconds of his post. And I would ra- <laughs> ram him into, because they automatically fire that, uh, you know, whoosh, or whatever it is, noise he had. So I would right. always force him right into, like, we'll be right back. And he would, cut him off. <laughs> he would never be able to say we'd be right back because I knew the, uh, I knew where the post was and I knew he would be in trouble every time. And he just, you know, he just was not that skilled uh, to be able to do anything about it at the time. Oh. He, has a, he has a tagline, or it's more like a tag soliloquy that I, ha- I literally have to turn off every time he goes to commercial. <laughs> Because it's so irritating to me, it, his 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 uh, outro is "We're right, they're wrong." That's the end of the story. The arguments on this program cannot be broken. It, so it's three separate <laughs> tags, any one of which would be fine as an outro. Um, not clever in any way, shape, or form but at least would, you know, would serve its purpose. But he does all three every single time. 
and it tries. I, 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 it, 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 it raises my shoulders up to my ears when I start to hear him do it, and I have to turn it off. Well, but you do listen. But, I mean, that is. Oh, I listen constantly. He is what we had in mind when we started. When we actually did the opening of the majority report, as it is now, and we kept it. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is, it doesn't quite work in the same way because we're not on AM talk radio anymore. And it, uh, the idea that we're parodying something doesn't make as much sense, but I couldn't give it up. But we would do, we had, uh, we had, you know, when we launched the majority, where it was like, no more empty slogans, because this is where truth comes to have a party, and where we're right and they're wrong. And it was just like seven or eight empty slogans after saying no more empty slogans. And he is the, he is the undisputed king of the empty slogan and the not terribly Uh, clever one. Well, Second generation empty slogan. Second generation. The new generation. <laughs> who, the so, new generation of empty slogans. Who else? Uh, who else do you listen to? Just uh, Wilkow and who else? Well, well, first of all, Bright Rep- Breitbart Report is on now. That's their morning show. Oh, Jesus. Then they go to Wilkow. Then they go to uh, Hannity. Then they go to Levin. Then they go to uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, David. Uh, he's got a real grow- gravelly voice. I can't think of his name. Um, but it's mostly Hannity, Levin, and Wilkow is generally when I'm in the car. So where is Wilkow? Is somewhere he, in those hours. Is Wilkow a Trump guy? Because this is interesting because um, this is now the first time that I can remember where there is at least where, you know, I don't know if I would call it a hard split, but it, there is a lot of schizophrenia in that world that, that it used to just be everybody was on the same page and Savage would attack these guys uh, even though he would ultimately come to the same place. But now right. there's, uh, there's really some schisms because they all get their funding. Uh, you know, they have multiple sources of funding now, it seems. But where is, like, Will Cow? Where, where are they on, on Trump versus Cruz? I, uh, I think my sense of Will, Will Cow is a little bit like Hannity, where he's sort of straddling the fence a little bit, where, you know, he's, he's very clearly not endorsing one or the other. My sense is that he falls more towards Cruz than Trump, but he's not disparaging Trump in mm-hmm. any way. Uh, Levin hates Trump. He's crazy Trump. to me. Levin hates Levin Trump. Levin hates Trump. I, I, and, and I will give Levin credit for, for doing that because, you know, Levin is, I would say of all of them, Levin actually is the most principled. He's also one of the most despicable um, in terms of his tone and the, and the way he speaks to people and about people. Um, but he, but, but I would say he, he, I, I, I think he is actually a principled person. Great. Uh, we just got our headline business. for the, uh, for the interview. Thank you. Yeah, Michael Levin Ian Black, dot, person. dot, Mark Levin, principled. Yep. You got it. Mm. Um, but he's a, but he's a terrible talk show host. Levin. Um, yeah. You think he's so? Terrible. I think the way he that he discuss the, the way that yes he does a few things that I think are just awful. Oh uh, well, that's different. That's different from being awful. Like you think he's awful in terms of his talent because Sean Hannity to me is the worst of the lot of them. He is just not engaging on radio. It seems to me. Uh, you know what? It, it, don't don't make me choose between my babies. Because uh, <laughs> I hate Sean Hannity. I, I mean, I hate listening to Sean Hannity. I hate listening to Levin. Well, what, what I, when I say he's terrible, what I really mean with Levin is specifically the way he deals with callers, I think, is just atrocious, which is just yelling at them, just right. hectoring, yelling, uh, and demeaning them for no reason. Yeah, he and... And, and so, and so it, makes, it, makes his own, it weakens his own arguments when he does that, and that's all he does. That's the only way he knows how to engage with callers who disagree with him. He and Hannity both sort of came from this sort of Bob Grant school of, uh, yeah. of, of talk radio, and that's where they're coming from. But, well, uh, so, Michael, when does the book come out? Uh, the Trump book some, comes out in July, right, right uh, the week before the Republican convention. Fantastic. Can I, we, if, if, um, can I get a signed copy for my daughter? Would you of do course that? you can. All right. Beautiful. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Then this has been a total success. Total success. Yeah, we've done success. great today. Um, Michael Ian Black. Where can people get more from me? I, Michael Ian Black dot com. And sure, then check but, out the know, Gaffigan t- show. T- it's on. Where's Twitter Gaffigan? Twitter is where I'm most active. Is it on? Uh, it's on Hulu and TV Land. Oh, TV Land. And 
And, and Hulu, I think, yeah. Okay. All right. Mike Lee and Black, thanks so much for your time today, buddy. I really appreciate it. Good to talk thanks, to you. Thanks, Sam. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Sam Cedar, and this is an Ann Coulter doll. You should not be immigrating here. Yeah. Stay in your country and hate us. For smart progressive talk and a little bit of this and even a little bit of that. Mission accomplished. Subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And like us on Facebook to get some of our best video clips.